Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to use Python and Neo4j. Um, so first thing you're going to want to make sure you have is Python installed on your computer along with Neo4j. In this case I have Neo4j desktop. After you have those two things installed, what you're going to do is first in, uh, we're going to make a local database within our Neo4j desktop. So in this case I'll call it financial database. And the password will be password. Um, but this won't really matter because you're making it on your local machine. Just make sure you remember your password. After that is installed, I'll, head I'll start the database and head over to Jupyter Notebooks to continue. Here's the Jupyter Notebook I'll be using for today. Um, you'll be able to find a link to this in the description um, below. Um, there's three components of this uh, notebook that I want to point out. The first one is I wanted to generate financial transactions and use Neo4j to visualize financial transactions in an easier way. Normally within the SAP systems or Oracle systems, those are relational databases, so you have to pull data out in a relational database way, which means you just have whatever transactions you want in a list, um, which is really interesting and you can do a lot with that, but the graphical component is missing. So first off, um, for those who don't know anything about financial transactions, there's kind of uh, a few things that are in every financial transaction. A transaction ID, uh, a vendor number or customer number, a transaction amount, um, different transactions types. Again, this is nothing which you're going to find in Oracle or uh, SAP. The, the general ledgers for those systems are much more complicated, but I didn't want to bore anyone with accounting um, before we even got to the Neo4j part. So first, what I wanted to do, and what I did is I generate a list of um, 50,000 transaction types. I use the random package to generate uh, vendor numbers. So uh, this is just going to be a random number, 50,000 random numbers between 1 and 2,500. This will sub, uh, act as like a vendor number or a distinct number to an account. Um, the transaction amount will be, again, a random digit between 2 and 1.2 million. And I wanted 50,000 of those. Then next, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a list of 50,000 random transaction types, um, which I do here. So in this case, um, I just create a list of 50,000 random numbers between 0 and 3. And then I iterate over those random numbers to um, assign random transactions um, to a transactions list. So that way, if, uh, for example, the first item in my list is zero, then I'll pull out cash withdrawals. If the next number is two, then I'll get domestic transfers. And I, it's just a way to get a list of uh, 50,000 random transaction types. Next, what I do is I convert everything into a uh, dictionary because I want to show you what this looks like uh, within a pandas data frame. So in this case, if I do, let me print uh, just like the, well, let's just print the first one. You can see that um, what my data frame has is a transaction ID, vendor, transaction amount, and, tran and transaction type, exactly what I need. In the, the next section, you can see I, I included a, a, a few lines to help import this data into a MariaDB database. So in Neo4j, there are some limitations on in regards to the programming that you can do in order to make um, relations between um, different nodes. Um, so it's helpful to have things in a relation relational database in case you want to use that as a basis to write further uh, relations within your Neo4j database. I'll get to that in a little bit, um, but I just wanted to include that here uh, in case anyone wanted to upload this, you know, the data that the, the fake the fake financial data they made in the previous section. If they wanted to upload it into a MySQL database, they could do that using these. Of course, you need to change your database name, password, um, and the user uh, and the table that you created. This last section here is actually importing data into your graphical database. Um, so I've split this um, section into kind of two parts. So the first is going to be making the commands that are going to be used to write data into your database and then the actual execution part. Um, so first thing you'll see is that you need to install the Neo4j library. Um, in this case, I converted my data frame that I showed you above uh, here uh, back into a a list because it's easier for I think most people to see a data frame to understand how the relations are um, and then I'll move it back to a I moved it back to a list because it's easier to iterate over a list to build the execution commands um, so from there I have an empty uh, empty list that I'll fill uh, with the respective string commands 
So next, what I do is I just iterate over the list commands and I use this normal ciphertext. So it's create and then the node, in this case, the node uh, transaction, you can have a pseudonym here or not. It doesn't really matter in this case. Um, and then the, the attributes of this uh, node. So in this case, I have the transaction ID, the vendor number, uh, the transaction amount, and the uh, transaction type, which you saw before. And as you'll see here, I'm just converting the, the values into strings, um, the list components into strings. So I know that the first element of my list is a transaction ID, the, the second one is the vendor, so on and so forth. And you can also see that um, up here, uh, if you had any uh, concerns about that. And then lastly, I just append it um, to my execution commands list. And so what I get from this, if I wanted to see what this would result in, part. Uh, let's just view the first four, for example. Um, you can see that everything is essentially just put into lists where there are different commands that I'll iterate over in the next step to actually load it into my database. Okay, so next what we're actually going to do is we're going to take this um, list, this transactions commands list, and then I'll run this function here, which just connects to my, my graphical database using this driver. Since it uses bolt and not uh, the, the Bolt protocol, you have to use their driver. Um, in this case, I know that the, the authorization is Neo4j and my password is password because that's what I used. If you have any questions um, about that, you can see when you when you load uh, log into your database and you hit run, you can see your it gives you the username. In this case, I'm connected to Neo4j. Okay, um, so as you can see, what I do is after I create uh, the connection to the database, I create an individual session, and then I iterate over the, uh, the transactions in the transaction execution commands list, and I run each transaction. Um, since I have 50,000 though, this is a little slow, so after I run this, you'll see if I open up my, my database, when the, 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 the nodes start appearing, you'll see that the, I'll have a, a new node called label or transaction. Uh, which is the the label I gave to the node. Um, so let's give it a second. See, you can see things are starting to populate. It is a little slow since I'm iterating iterating over uh, one by one. I should concatenate things into a singular list, maybe of like five thousand at a time. Um, but I'm just going to pause it until all fifty thousand are loaded. All right, now you can see that I'm at fifty thousand. Uh, just to verify the transactions, you can click transactions and see the individual nodes. Um, in this case, I think I'm just showing the transaction ID, but if I want to show like transaction amount or vendor number, I can show it here. Um, this is just to get the data into Neo4j. Um, if anyone's interested, I can make um, another video on how you actually use this data to make, to get like usable insights, because right now this actually just shows um, transactions, individual, each transaction is an individual node. Like there's no real knowledge gain from doing this. Um, but in the end, this is just kind of how you get data in. Uh, in the next video, I'll show how you can use Python to further enrich your data within Neo4j in, in ways that you can't do internally. Like you can't use certain, Neo4j has a lot of awesome components and a lot of, a little bit of programming that you're able to do, but there are some uh, fundamental things that Neo4j is limited in doing that Python can support in. And I'll show that in another video, but I just wanted to show you this is how you upload data successfully from Python into Neo4j um, and optionally using a relational database to grab or push information. Um, if anyone has any comments or questions, feel free to leave them and I'll get back to them um, as soon as I have time. Thanks.